Hey everyone, this video is going to serve as a guide on how to download as well as install Atmos Studio for Microprocessor Applications 1. I would start on the course website and on the sidebar click on the software slash docs page and then if you scroll down a little bit you'll get to the Atmos Studio section and currently the second link is the download for Atmos Studio so I'll click on that and that's going to take us to Microchip's website. Microchip owns Atmel, so any documentation or software from Atmel you need to find, you're going to have to go to Microchip's website. So for the download, if I scroll down a little bit, we'll get to the download section. And this section has two links, which are basically just two different methods of downloading and installing Atmel Studio. So the first link is the web installer. And what the web installer does is it only downloads the the components of Atmos Studio that you request as you go through the installation process and the offline installer as you can tell by the file size downloads the entire software package and then as you go through the installation process you can pick and choose which components of Atmos Studio you want to actually install so with that being said I prefer the offline installer because uh, if you have any internet or connectivity issues while you're using the web installer, it could kind of ruin or corrupt the program. So I would only use this one if you're at home and you know you have a stable connection. So like I said, I'm going to use the offline installer. So I'm going to go ahead and start the download and then I'll be back when it's done. Alright, once your download finishes, go ahead and open up the installer. So I'll go ahead and say this, um, I'm on a fresh installation of Windows 10, so some of the things you see should look more or less like they do when you open up the installer. Uh, the only exception is some of the prerequisite software to install Atmos Studio you may already have. Uh, Atmos Studio is based off of Visual Studio, so if, there's, if you've ever installed Visual Studio before or any other software that uses Visual Studio, you may already have some of the prerequisites that I'm going to have to install. So don't worry if this looks a little bit different than when you do it. So first thing, agree to the terms of service. Uh, you can choose where you want to install it. I'm going to deselect this and then click next. So now here's where we actually choose which packages we want to install. Um, for this class, the only thing you need is the 8-bit AVR MCU package. Uh, because the X Mega the microcontroller that you're using is an 8-bit and it's based on the AVR instruction set. So you can go ahead and select that. And then you could optionally select these if you want. Like, if, for example, if you think you're ever going to use any other maybe larger Atmel based processors in the future, uh, I know, for example, I know that sometimes I have to work with this category. So I'm going to leave this selected and then click next. And then uh, extensions. So Atmel Software Framework is. Basically, a collection of software and drivers for Atmel's development boards or components that they sell. So, none of this is going to be used in the class. So, again, it's up to you whether you want to install it or not. It just takes up a little more space. You click next. So, here's where um, a lot of people run into problems. So, there's a there's a wide variety of things that are basically required before you can move on. So. Uh, one problem I have on a fresh copy of Windows, if you have Windows updates that are pending, you'll have to install those before you can continue. And then if you have a Windows installer already running, like if you were uninstalling a program before this and it never finished or something along those lines, you'll have to finish that. Windows update, um, if, you're, if you have a pending Windows update, it won't let you continue. So all these things you just have to make sure are satisfied before you can, can go on. So after that, click Next. Um, device header file versions, uh, so basically don't worry about this. Um, this is more along the lines of the Atmel software framework stuff. So uh, if everything went well, here you should be able to click install. And now this is again for the offline installer. If you, do, if you use the web installer, this might look a little different because you're going to have to basically wait for it to download the components that you select as you go through the installation process, whereas here uh, it's only doing installations, not downloads. So here, like I said, it's installing Visual Studio. 
or at least part of Visual Studio that it needs to run Atmos Studio. So uh, just go ahead and wait for this to load. Okay, so uh, if this pops up, don't worry about it. This is basically installing some of the drivers that you'll need to program the microcontroller. So go ahead and install that also. And for you, any any different number of these could pop up depending on, again, which software you have already installed. Uh, so in my case, I need to install everything since I'm on a fresh copy of Windows. So don't worry if any of this looks different, just install everything it asks you to. Alright, so uh, once it's done installing, Go ahead and select uh, Launch Atmos Studio and then hit close and then it'll open up. So that installation process could take you guys a little bit less time or a little bit more time than me depending on how many of those packages you decided to install earlier. Uh, a little background on Atmos Studio, it's an integrated development environment or IDE for short. And basically what that means is in terms of this class is it's a single application that allows you to do multiple different things at once. So it serves as, number one, a text editor with a lot of nice formatting and text auto-completion uh, features that a lot of other things don't have specifically for Atmel devices. And then the second thing is it acts as a way to actually program your microcontroller as well as debug, uh, which basically means run your code and see the status of your processor. So you can step instruction by instruction, line by line of code, and see the status of the processor as the program runs, which is a really nice feature and allows you to um, find a lot of problems in your code that you wouldn't be able to find otherwise. So that's about it for this video. Uh, we'll actually show you guys how to set up a new project for an assembly program as well as a C program and a couple of other different videos. I hope you enjoyed our video. And if you did, subscribe and like us right down here. Do it now. I'm not going to look. Maybe I'll peek. Ooh. And if you really liked us, follow us on Twitter.